Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to talk about one of the topic for science KSSM form 2 chapter 6 acid and alkali. So this topic acid and alkali actually is one of the topic for the theme 2 exploration of element in nature. The other topics that included in this theme which is chapter 5 uh, water and solution. Okay, so what's the content in this chapter? First, you are going to learn about the properties for acids and also alkali. And after you all learn about how to differentiate acid and alkali, you are going to learn about the neutralization process between acid and alkali as well. Okay, so the first subtopic will be properties of acid and alkali. So in this topic, you are going to define operationally what is acid and alkali. You are also going to explain with examples of acidic and alkaline substances. You are, you are going to demonstrate the technique to determine the strength of acid and alkali based on their pH value or others property, as well as you are going to identify the uses of acid and alkali in your daily life. Okay, so these are the examples for acid and alkali. For acid, you can identify their names with the terms acid. For example, hydrochloric acid and also nitric acid. The other kind of acid that we use in the, in the laboratories, which is sulfuric acid. For alkali, uh, you, can, you can realize there is a term hydroxide in the terms of alkali. So the examples include sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, or lithium hydroxide. Okay, there is another example for alkali which does not have the terms hydroxide. The only examples that without terms hydroxide but it is alkali is ammonia. So these three things which is alkali, so how you are going to differentiate acid and alkali with their names? Acid, we have the terms acid, but alkali, we have the terms uh, hydroxide. So this is how we are going to differentiate between acid and alkali with their names. Okay, next, what's the difference between acid and alkali? So the first thing, according to their taste, Acid will have a sour taste, but alkali it will have a soppy feel and include it has sometimes it has bitter taste. So the best example we can see from uh, from here is actually acids. Uh, we have vinegar, we have uh, lemons, oranges, but alkali we can see here we have salt, washing powder, or lime water. Okay, next acid. Uh, strong acid can corrode metals. Okay, same goes to alkalis. If strong alkalis, they also can corrode metals. Okay, some can burn living tissue. Battery acid, other kinds won't. Okay, so for alkalis, it can be caustic. Some acid, it is hazardous. Uh, for example, those strong acids like sulfuric acids. But some are harmless. For example, the vinegar we usually use in our home. Okay, but for alkali, there are also some are hazardous. For example, sodium hydroxide or uh, potassium hydroxide. But some are harmless as well. For example, uh, sodium bicarbonate, which is the baking powder we use to bake, to bake cakes. Okay, so acids. Acid have the properties to neutralize alkali, but alkali same goes to alkalis. It has the property to neutralize acid. Acids will turn the litmus uh, indicator to become red from blue to red. While for alkalis, it can turn a red litmus indicator becomes blue. So for the concept of a litmus indicator or we known as a litmus paper, this concept you actually you had learned in primary school. Okay, so for acid, it has the pH value of 1 to 6, which is uh, smaller than which is smaller than 7. While for alkali, it has the value of pH of 8 to 14, which is greater than 7. So the value for 7 actually is the value for neutral substance. Okay, so how you are going to uh, memorize how you are going to memorize the change of litmus paper. Change of litmus 
uh, litmus indicator. So you are going to memorize these changes of litmus paper with the terms sambal. So once you list down the, the word sambal, you are going to cut off two alphabets. Two alphabets. Okay, so if you notice it is from M to B. M in Malay we stands for Mera. Mera stands for red. While B is Biru. In English we call blue. So this is very simple. Okay, so from Mera ke Biru, from red to blue, actually is going from left directions to right hand side. So it is AL. AL which is alkali. Alkali. Okay, so next. Uh Okay, so if from blue to red, if from Biru Camera actually is from right hand side, you look to left hand side. So you are going to look to left hand side, which is AS. So AS stands for acid in Malay, so in English we call it as acid. Okay, so it's very simple to memorize the change in litmus indicator. Okay, so what are acidic? Okay, the first one, which is vinegar. Vinegar and also this one is a uh, like uh, lemon juice. Okay, since those uh, vinegar and lemon juice they are sour, so actually they are acidic. Okay, so the next one will be the uh, carbonated drinks. Okay, these carbonated drinks actually uh, they are as they contain acid, although they feel although they taste sweet. So what are the acids contained inside? Okay, it is a uh, carbonate, carbonate acid contained inside these uh these carbonated drinks. So please reduce drinking it as it will corrode your teeth if you drink too much. Okay, so alkaline. So the first thing will be salt you use to bathe every day. Next one will be uh next one will be toothpaste. So why salt and toothpaste must be alkaline? Because uh our body and our teeth actually it contains a lot of pathogen or bacteria which is acidic. So in order to neutralize or cancel out the acidic properties, we require uh, alkaline. So salt and also toothpaste must be alkaline. So the third the next the third one will be detergent. Detergent. So detergent actually it is alkaline as well because we are going to wash our acidic uh acidic shirts. Or because our body actually always release those uh, those sweats and then it will attract those bacteria which is acidic. So in order to clean our shirt, we need the detergents in as in alkaline properties. Okay, so in order to determine whether these things are acidic, neutral, or alkaline, we require indicators. So we require indicators. So what are the indicators that can be proved that the things is acid, alkali or neutral? Okay, the first two things which is blue and red litmus paper. So blue and red litmus paper actually you can memorize with the method of sambal just now. Okay, for acid, it will turn to red color if you use a blue litmus paper. For neutral and also alkali, it will remain as blue and it will no change in any colors. Okay, next, red litmus paper. So it will remain as red color if it is acid and also neutral, but then it will turn to blue when it comes to alkali properties. Okay, next, universal indicator actually is an indicator that we use in laboratory. So if acid, it will uh, it will occur as red color. For neutral, it will occur as green color. While for the alkali, it will occur as blue color. Okay, so it will change color according to the properties inside the solution. Okay, next will be methyl orange. Methyl orange will be red color in acids, while uh, in for neutral and alkali, it will be yellow color. Okay, we don't really use methyl orange in the laboratory because it is very difficult for us to identify whether it is neutral or alkali. Okay, next, which is phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein, this one, actually, uh, it displays as no color for acid and also neutral, but then for alkali, it will display a pink color. So this pink color, will prove that the things within alkali solution is in alkali condition. 
Okay, so for the as the strength of acid and alkali, okay, as what I mentioned just now, neutral is stands for pH value of seven. So what are the example for pH value seven? So distilled water you are using uh, in your home or in the laboratory. So this uh this new this seven. Okay, the va the pH value of seven proves that it is neutral. So it is not. It don't. It doesn't have any acidic or alkaline properties. Okay, from neutral going lesser, it is from one to six. From one to six, actually, is acidic property. It is acidic property. So from one to six will be acidic property. While from eight to fourteen, increase from seven. 8 to 14 actually it is alkaline property okay so number one we use hydrochloric acid in our stomach so uh, humans human stomach consists of hydrochloric acid So human stomach consists of hydrochloric acids because hydrochloric acids used to kill bacteria, kill pathogens, as well as activate the protease. Activate the protease in order to help you to digest the protein to become polypeptides. So this is the topics you learn in chapter 3 from 2, nutrition. Okay, next, lime juice. Okay, lime juice. Lime juice and apple and tomato, actually, you all meet it in your daily life every day. Okay, next, tea, actually, it is also consists of some acidic property. Okay, so next, next will be the fresh milk, actually, it's uh, more to acidic, but then it is near to neutral. So don't worry, uh, you will not have any harmful to your bodies if you drink more milk okay next salt water salt water actually you usually use in your home to wash some things uh, yeah and then toothpaste you use to brush your teeth okay milk of magnesia milk of magnesia actually this one is a kind of medicines that you are going to take if you are uh, having gastric pain so what uh, what of what kind of situations that you will have the gastric pain so the hydrochloric acids here in your stomach it is too much it is too much and then you will feel like gastric pain so uh, in that situations you will require milk of magnesia you require milk of magnesia to neutralize the hydrochloric acids in order to relieve your painness okay next detergent is used to wash your shirt and then a uh, lime water is used to neutralize the acidic land to uh, produce a better plant okay next sodium hydroxide and also potassium hydroxide these two are strong alkali alkaline what are the usage of acid in our daily life so the first one will be sulfuric acid sulfuric acid will be act as an electrolyte in car battery and also it used to create papers plastic and also nylon okay next hydrochloric acid it exists in our stomach in order to kill pathogens so pathogens is the virus enter our body that will cause uh, that will cause illness so did you have learned about pathogens the concept of pathogens in chapter 4 okay next carbonic acid actually this one is a uh, uh, is exists in carbonated drinks and then acetic acid is used to produce vinegar Okay, next for the alkaline in daily life, sodium hydroxide usually is used to produce salt and detergent. Okay, calcium hydroxide is used to do cement and also neutralize the acidic land. So ammonia is usually used as fertilizer. Magnesium hydroxide is used to uh, produce produce antacid peel and also milk of magnesia so these two medicines actually we take it while we are having uh, gastric pain so that's the end for today's video if you feel like this video is useful then please give me a like if you have any dopes you can leave a comment below and the most important please do not forget to subscribe this youtube channel see ya and logics and laboratory will be right back